Mauricio Alonso makes his way to the cage in the main event super fight here at Dragon House 19. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the last call for alcohol. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, this is the main event in the blue corner. A middleweight weighing 185 pounds. He's 30 years old with a professional MMA record of 6 and 1. He is the owner and proprietor and fights out of Raul Castillo BJJ in Half Moon Bay. Raul! His opponent in the red corner, also 185 pounds, 35 years old, with a pro MMA record of 10 wins, 5 losses, and 1 no contest, fighting for KOA Training Center in Newark, California, Mauricio Alonso! Your referee for this fight is Ed Colantes. Hey, gentlemen. Red, do you have any questions? Do you have any questions? Okay, let's Here we have a super fight between two second degree Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belts with the Strike Force veteran Raul Castillo fighting Mauricio Alonso here in the main event at Dragon House 19. Yeah, Raul Castillo taking this fight. This is the first fight that he's had since 2010. So we'll see if he's got that ring rust. That's a great point, Ronnie. Alonzo, on the other hand, has been very active. We last saw him just four months ago at Dragon House 18, where he scored a devastating knockout against a very game, Jamie Hara. Yeah, that was a good fight. But so will this one. You got to give it up to the owner and promoter of Dragon House MMA Promotions, Sifu Jung Lo, for matching up these two very, very good uh, fighters who are very well respected in the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu community. Yeah, Raul Castillo didn't ever plan on coming back to fight, but Sifu asked him to come out on the last Dragon House event, and here he is. There's a feel out process here early in the first round. It's just a matter of time before this gets to the ground. Both Jiu Jitsu black belts. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be epic. If the fight goes there, it looks like these two fighters are, are choosing to stand and strike for the moment. We'll see how much longer. Raul Castillo, home of Adam Piccolotti, our 155-pound champion. Mauricio Alonso, of course, as we all know, has a really good ground game, but he has knockout power as well. So Castillo is going to have to keep that in mind. He's got that tall kickboxer-type body. And he has some hands. We've seen him throw them. I love watching these two fighters fight just because they're so respectful outside of the cage. But as soon as they are locked in the cage, they, they turn into complete animals. There's a lot of pride on the line as both fighters represent two highly respected Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu academies. Raul yeah. Castillo with uh, Raul Castillo, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in Half Moon Bay, and Mauricio Alonso with uh, his own school, Alonso Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in Newark, California. I just saw Alonso coaching a lot of fighters and uh, Jiu-Jitsu practitioners at a tournament two weekends ago, and here he is two weekends later fighting in the main event here at Dragon House 19. 
Yeah, I used jiu-jitsu guys stay active. They were, where was that, at the Bay Area Jiu-Jitsu Tournament? Uh, yes, it was. Yeah. What do you think Alonso's game plan was here for this fight tonight, Ronnie? I think Raul Castillo just drove across the cage, dude, going for that double leg. It was just a matter of time before this fight gets to the ground. I believe they both had the same game plan. Stand around for a while, exchange some punches, and then take it to the ground and see whose black belt holds more ground. At least here in the octagon today. Raul Castillo looking to finish nice. the takedown. And he scores a big double leg slam takedown. With authority, he rolls. Oh, he almost rolled. That was uh, something I never even really seen. He, he tried to wrap both arms behind the leg and do a roll. Wow. Hard ground and pound shots from Castillo up top. Referee Ed Colantes is watching very carefully. He needs to move, change positions, do something. Castillo hasn't fought in five years, but he looks like he hasn't missed a beat here tonight. He's still intelligently defending himself. He's blocking, but he just seems to be content to stay there. He's not taking any real crucial punishment. These fans are going crazy. Raul Castillo looks over at his corner and hears his, his coaches. That is a veteran right there. When you can stop and listen to your corner. If, I don't know if Marcel's hurt or what, but the referee was close to stopping that one. That was. It takes a very special individual to step in this cage. And it takes another very special individual to fight another Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt and handle him. And it appears Raul Castillo is capable of doing that. I'm, I'm wondering how Alonso is going to come out here for the second round. He, he has some success keeping him at bay with his jabs. Ronnie, if you're Alonso, are you trying to utilize your strikes more? Or, or was that just a bad slow start for him in the first. I'm not sure, but I, I want to give a shout out to Adam Piccolotti in the corner there. That's our 155 pound champion there in Raul Castillo's corner. Um, as for Marcel, Alonso's game plan, these guys, his jiu-jitsu is on a whole nother level. Uh, I feel privileged just being here commentating on it. They, they know what their game plan is, and we'll see who can execute it better. But that round definitely goes to Raul Castillo. I would have to agree with you, Ronnie. And we start the second round of this super fight in the main event here at Dragon House 19. Mauricio Alonso looking to utilize his reach, reach advantage, keep Castillo at bay. Yeah, a lot of the times when you have such well-rounded grapplers, dude, they, that most of the fight they stay standing. But um, Raul Castillo had such, uh, such success with that takedown that he should probably go right back to it. Yeah, that's a great point, Ronnie. And I'm thinking if I'm Alonzo, I probably want to keep the fight on the feet. We've seen before that he has knockout power, and if he lands one of those punches, he can put any man out. And with that long reach, use it to his advantage. It looks like he's finding his groove early in the second round here is Alonzo. Nice body kick by Mauricio Alonzo. As I said earlier, both, both fighters represent two highly respected Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu academies and neither wants to lose nice in front fake. of their fans. You saw that fake, you got it. set him up for that fake. Yeah, Made him flinch and went straight for the shot. That, that is a seasoned, a seasoned veteran move right there. Castillo's going to look to grab a, grab a hold of a single leg. He switches it to a double. Let's see if he can finish it here. Alonso needs to be aggressive and turn out of this. But it's hard when you have such a good grappler like Castillo pin, pinning you against the cage.
This may not look like a lot of action to you fans watching at home, but this is a very tiring position for both men. For both men, Raul Castillo using all that leg power and shoulder pressure to pin him up against the cage. And Mauricio Alonso holding on to that tight wizard and, and, and working for wrist control is also Raul Castillo. Exactly, there's a lot of technique involved when both fighters are trying to advance to a superior position. He's trying to lock his hands. Once he's got some locked, it's a wrap. He will take him down. He's got him locked. Alonzo relentless with the defense on the takedowns, though. Yeah. Oh, he's got him locked. It's just, oh, great balance, but, oh, great. Take that. Those are hips right there. That's some jiu-jitsu hips. That's balance. That's experience. And those are those long legs of Mauricio coming into play. This is going to fatigue Castillo, going for those takedowns and not finishing them. Farah I'd start stomping on those feet while I'm pressing on them. Do some vicious foot stomps right Referee there. Referee Ed Colantes is warning them about inactivity. He's watching very closely, looking to stand up the fight. If there's not much action here. And there you go, good call. Good call by referee Ed Colantes. People want to see action. Double jab caught out by the corner of Mauricio Alonso. And that's a good call because we've seen him score some, some successful jabs here early in this fight. Raul Castillo circling, seems to be a little tired. Oh, there you go, nice overhand. Not sure if it landed from his position. Landed flush for Alonso. Oh. Raul Castillo backing up. I tend to favor the fighter that's in forward motion. That's Castillo. a good point, Ronnie. And Alonso throwing some stiff jabs, and I don't blame Castillo for, for circling and trying to find my groove back. These are some big guys. Big 185 pounders. Yeah. Big skilled fighters. They probably cut a lot of weight to make 185 here tonight. Marisha sporting those old school fair tex shorts with the old school fair tex gloves. Not seen too often anymore. Since fair tex closed down here in the city. This was a great second round for Alonzo. How, how, how would you score that second round, Ronnie? Uh, tend to lean probably towards Mauricio Alonzo just for the forward pressure. Nothing much too spectacular happened either way. But uh, I got it probably one to one on my unofficial scorecards. It's all about who wants it more right now. I agree, Ronnie. This is mano a mano here. Both, both fighters representing two. Again, as I, I, I said it before, I'm going to keep saying it. Both fighters representing two highly respected Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu academies. No fighter wants to lose, but no fighter definitely doesn't want to lose in front of their students and, and their supporters who, who came a long way to support them. And this third round is mano a mano, and both fighters are going to come out and gun for the finish. Yeah, that's the thing about MMA. You never can tell who's gonna win. You know, sometimes the guy that's supposed to win on paper doesn't necessarily win. Anything can turn any fight around at any time. And that's why I love this sport. You know, you gotta give it up to Castillo, on, you know, making his triumph, fifth return to MMA. He hasn't fought for five years, but judging by how he looks in the, in the cage tonight, he looks great, he stayed in shape. Throughout, the, throughout these years, and um, you know, he, he's a great teacher. And he's still relatively young at the age of 30. Exactly. He changed the likes of Adam Piccolotti, our, as you mentioned, our lightweight champion. Mm. Alonzo looking to utilize his, his very good jabs, keep Castillo at bay.
Let's see if Castillo can change levels and score another takedown. Raul Castillo seems to be drenched in sweat and water, make it a lot more slippery in the clinch and on the takedowns and on the ground game if they choose to take it there. Yeah, and I think Alonzo's choosing to stand and bang. He's looking to throw some stiff, stiff jabs. Kick wow. for kick. That's a drill that we practice many times. You kick me, I kick you back. Castillo also trains in the art of Muay Thai, as does Alonzo, as you can see by these very nice leg kicks. These leg kicks have added up here in the third round, and the judges are paying attention. Castillo looking to get Alonso to nice the cage. Jab. Switching it up to the body, inside leg kick. It looks like Alonso has a striking advantage, and Castillo had a very successful first round on the ground. And, this, and that is exactly where he wants to go as he shoots in for another takedown. Great takedown defense by Alonzo. In the yeah, he round. does not want to get taken down. There's a Muay Thai clinch. Nice. Oh, that landed flush to the chin. Raul Castillo is down. Cannot get careless with a second degree black belt at the lights of Raul Castillo. But Alonso takes out. him out. He smells blood. He's going to take his time. There's he, no need to rush. He needs to posture up right now and finish him. Cannot let him recover. The short elbows right there. Oh, and he gets his back. As a second degree black belt, perhaps is not intimidated or, or scared to give his back. But in my opinion, Mauricio Alonso has to finish him here. That's very subjective. This has been a very closely contested fight. And Alonso's gunning for the finish regardless. And he might have it to try to flatten him out. He's trying to flatten him out. He, he lost the ankle. It looks like he's resorting oh, to Gable Grip. getting flattened out. He will refuse to tap. I can't see from this vantage point how tight it is. And oh, he got out of that as he turtles up. Very hard to stay on top when you're so wet and slippery and with a minute left in the fight. Raul Castillo. Oh, Raul Castillo switches, takes his back. This is what we wanted to see, ladies and gentlemen. How about that for some Brazilian jiu-jitsu? This, the fans in the building have exploded. I can barely hear myself talk. Mauricio does not want to end the fight on his back. This fight is very close to call, too close to call. And I know fighters are going to push for a finish, a strong finish here, late in the third. This is where Castillo wanted to be. I mean, not necessarily after being uh, <laughs> Posturing up, posturing up, looking for a finish. Mauricio, still dangerous off his back, very dangerous. Looking up, he looked for a triangle, didn't and have it. 10 seconds left in the fight. And Castillo Most is gonna pound the way. Great, great fight, very, 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 very close, tough call. Tough fight to call. I would hate to be a judge right now. Very nice, very nice. I don't know what to say. I would probably give it to Raul Castillo, but who am I? These guys are two second degree black belts who gave it their all in this jiu-jitsu super fight. So, And being here since Dragon House 5 to now Dragon House 19.
I have seen, I have seen this, I have seen Dragon House grow and continue to grow and put on better and better and bigger shows for us. Stay tuned for Dragon House 20 coming at you June 6th. I love how they took amateur fighters, amateur local Ladies fighters. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a big round of applause for the best fight of the night. An incredible test of wills and skills and endurance. I have proof that it's the best fight of the night, a tightly contested match, because the judges have handed down a split decision. Hey, wouldn't you, wouldn't you agree that it was a close fight? It was very close. Here we go. The judges scored this fight as follows. 29 to 28 in favor of the red corner. 29 to 28 in favor of the blue corner. And the final judge also scored this fight 29 to 28 in favor of the winner in the blue corner, Raul!